Welcome to The Real Talk with Amethyst. It is a lovely summer day, and I am on location at Camp Dawson's Are You Afraid of the Dawson? screening of Are You Afraid of the Dark and Mean Girls. Talk about a fabulous opportunity, well, a distinct pleasure. I had the opportunity to interview actor and producer Daniel DeSanto. Daniel is known for his roles as Tucker on Are You Afraid of the Dark, the voice of Carlos Ramon on the Magic School Bus, Jason in Mean Girls, Hal Bill Jr. on the famous Jet Jackson. He was also other characters such as the voice of Ray on Beyblade, daring Danny X on Paw Patrol, Brock Leeton on Braceface and more. Stay tuned for the interview and bloopers. Everyone, please let this be a normal feel. Magic School Bus was one of my first things that I got, and my agent just happened to send me for an audition for it. And I had done a couple of uh, like cartoons before that. I did like Tales from the Fish Keeper and uh, Arthur, or like I don't know, like sticking around, like all, all these like real kids cartoons that were recording in Toronto at the time. And the Magic School Bus came up, and, and I, you know, I knew it from school and reading the books and everything. And I just happened to book it, you know. They were looking for an ethnic-sounding voice, and I guess that was me. So, uh, so I booked it, and it was great because you got to do four seasons of the show, and so many episodes, and I learned so much of being behind the uh, the microphone and, and doing voice and doing film and television is so different. So, I'd like to give you a better story, but I just auditioned for it, and I was lucky enough to book it, and that's it. But from that, that spawned my whole like voice career. So. You know, it's a small community, so everybody in the voice world knows everybody. So because I did not just move, so I got to do this, and I got to do this, and I got to do this, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So how did you land, or how are you afraid of the dark? You know what? Same thing. I, 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 I just happened to audition for it. Are You Afraid of the Dark actually shot in Montreal, in, in Canada, and I'm from Toronto. So they did like, I think like a Canada wide, and maybe a US wide search for Tucker, because he, Tucker came on my character 13. So I had watched first and second season when I could because I was about 10 years old. My parents were let me watch it, so I'd see what happened. I'd see what try to watch it. Um, and then third season, a couple of cast members left. So they were looking for Gary's younger brother. And that was Tucker. And I got to audition, and Tucker was supposed to be like a kind of loud mouth, kind of annoying younger brother. I'm not trying to say I was that, but I was able to play it pretty convincingly. So, so I don't know, I went for the audition, they liked me, I guess. Well, I was annoying enough for the character, they brought me back for a callback and for a test, and again, I was lucky enough to work it. So what are some facts that people might not know? Like, what for instance, like, what is your favorite color? Do you have a favorite restaurant? I, uh, my favorite color is gray, which really isn't a color, it's a shade. But I don't know, I love gray, like, you know, gray clothes, gray paint, uh, decor that's gray, like, I just love shades of gray. Um, and uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, I thought you were going to ask, uh, I thought you were going to go a different place, it's kind of funny for a But I don't know, I mean, food-wise, I'm Italian, so pasta. I love a nice bowl of pasta. I'm going to tell you more, so, yeah, wherever I am, especially Chicago, I just had deep dish for the first time. So I'm adding that to the Italian, uh, you know, menu of uh, things that I really like. So, yeah, yeah. So, now this is the part of the segment where I like to switch it and ask the person I'm interviewing if they have any questions for me. Uh, why did you start doing this? Well, really, I started doing it like I always wanted to get into journalism, but I had a couple of bad experiences. So growing up, I was like working with the editor of like a local uh, newspaper, uh, and I would write stories. But in submitting, the stories would get posted, but they would never give me credit. So they would post my story, but I would never get credit. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're gonna take the credit for it anyway, so I might as well right. do my own thing and form my own path. Yeah. I respect it. Similar with my industry, you kinda of have to forge your own path and do your own thing. I 
it is expected. I think you're pretty great. We just got the dessert menu. So that means the real party is about to start here. Uh, but I think you're great, Emma, because this is a lot of fun. Whenever you're in Toronto or in Canada, we gotta look me up and we gotta do this again. I won't do a follow up. And I gotta say I love the cake. Thank and you. it's Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Wait. See? <laughs> You plan this better than I did. Like, you're like the nails, the ring, the like, you can't see the one shoe, the toenail. It's, it's happening, man. On Wednesdays, we do wear a pair. Yeah. Yeah. So, one last question. Yes. What would you say, what role are you most recognized for? I think it's this. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. I have a beard now, and there's white in my beard, and, and it's been like 14, 15 years since we shot this, you know? But even with this, people still come up to me and say, it's your muffin butter. And it's so weird to hear that as a grown-ass man. It's very weird to hear that. It's better to hear that than go shake your back. It is better to hear that. But yeah, it's Mean Girls. I mean, it's so crazy when we were shooting it. I just thought we were doing like another movie. And it turned into this thing that people still keep going back to. And, a lot of people have seen it, so I'm sorry you've seen this face a lot, but yeah, some people do recognize the time and time and say, you're that guy. <laughs> Great. That's I it. That's all I can say about that. Great. I want to thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. I'm sorry about your toe. Yeah. You can't see it. People that kind of accept you for you. And then not only that, I think we're gonna have to fight this bullying. Like, this bullying happening are just as stupid and monetized, and especially in the US, uh, uh, you know, it's starting, it's starting to happen in Canada too. Like, and we we'll just be good to each other, man. Like, just be nice, just be kind. Go out of your way if you can. Uh, you know, and we, now, uh, uh, like, filming everything that happens, you know, let's try to do something. Help somebody. Because, you know, we're trying to get on the bus, we're trying to get off the bus. You know, let's just try to help each other. Just be a little bit nice. Uh, I want to ask you advice on that. Uh, I want to ask you about Chicago. How is it staying bad and what things are you taking it? Let me start by saying Daniel was so nice and sweet. I wonder if he is a little bit shy like myself. <laughs> During the interview, he was so intuitive about his journey. I would like to share some behind the scenes facts. During the beginning of the interview, there was a relentless bumblebee. It kept swarming around near Danny. Danny said the bumblebee must be trying to make a cameo. I replied, I am so afraid of bees. I followed it with my eyes. Even though no one was talking to the bumblebee, it decided to stick around for a while. We laughed at the nerve of it and proceeded with the interview. Another fun fact was that we were there on a Wednesday. The frozen cocktails are called, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. This was definitely a hit. Although I didn't get a drink, I did wear pink. Did it? <laughs> anyway, this was just some goofy humor. Sorry if you don't get it. But anyway, as the interview continued, I asked Daniel some additional questions that were not featured in the video. The first question was, if you could have dinner with anyone in the world, who would it be? He said Al Pacino for sure. Daniel continued to explain why, mostly because of the Godfather, as he did his rendition, talking like him. The second question I asked, are you by chance a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? The reason for this question is because of the recent split between Marvel and Sony. Marvel and Sony has a rift over the rights to Spider-Man. Daniel replied, I don't really watch much MCU only because I never really got into it. Also, I don't know him However, Simu Liao, a fellow Canadian, was just announced as the latest Marvel superhero, Shang-Chi. 
Later on during the screening, Daniel mentioned that it was really strange to see himself on the screen. He said, I haven't watched myself on the screen in a while. I said, how old were you when you filmed the TV show, How Are You Afraid of the Dark? I told him I thought he was around 9 or 10. He responded, I was a little 12. He laughed with an astonished look on his face. That was so long ago when I was a kid. I'm a grown man now and looking at myself that young is weird. Needless to say, he did everything but focus on the screen. Daniel glanced maybe once or twice, but it was as if the person on the screen and him were not connected at all. But I'm pretty sure that we all can relate to sitting back, flipping through old pictures of yourself. What's really cool is watching old or new videos. I'm telling you, there is nothing like nostalgia. But anyway, I want to thank you all for tuning into this episode. I would like to offer a word of encouragement. If you have something that you want to do, go for it. There are people who can possibly help you but refuse to for some reason. Don't give up. It's difficult when you don't know where to turn or who to turn to. Trust me, it's hard work, but sometimes the conquest is challenging yourself. When you do and you fail, don't give up. Don't criticize yourself because the world is capable of doing that for you. Remember, you can learn a lot about yourself. See you all next time. Bye.